Well, hello everybody and welcome to another episode. I do love it when the postman brings me nice new stuff and this week he's brought me something really nice. It's this, the TT Artisans 17mm f1.4 and although I didn't buy this lens myself, I'm going to give you a full and honest appraisal of its qualities and you can judge its performance for yourself by checking out the sample images. There are some really innovative and capable designs coming out of China at the moment in terms of manual focus lenses and this is one of the most interesting and nicest I've seen. It's got a real premium quality feel as well. It comes in this very nice presentation box. It has a real quality feeling. Let me show you a bit more closely. So there is our box. We've got the uh, title of the lens up here in uh, a nice font. We've got an image of the lens on the front there. And it really does feel like uh, we've got the TT Artisans logo there. And it really does feel like a very nice premium quality product. Let's open the lid. And inside we've got an instruction manual. There's our instruction manual and no doubt that's in various languages but it does give us all the specification of the lens there. Then we've got this layer of foam rubber beneath which sits our lens. So there is our lens. It's made entirely from metal and it's nicely finished in black. It feels pretty hard wearing as well. It's an APS-C or Micro Four Thirds lens. It has apertures from f1.4 to f16. It focuses down to 20 centimeters, which is pretty close. And all in all, it's a very nicely feeling, very nicely finished little lens. One very nice touch is that TT Artisans have included the optical design of the lens there on the body as well. It feels really tight and together. This is a very, very nicely made piece of kit. There's a metal lens cap that screws on revealing the front element within. It's a fairly prominent front element and I'll show you the rear. This one's in Fuji mount but they come in all the popular mirrorless camera mounts as well. So everything turns really smoothly, very silky in fact and this lens is no less smooth than the best of the vintage lenses we've often looked at. There's clearly some first class engineering going on here with no play or slop to be found anywhere. The only minor criticism I might make is that the markings are not engraved. They're printed on uh, using some sort of printing process so they might eventually where it's made in all the mirrorless mounts, Sony E-mount, Fuji X-mount. This is a Fuji X uh, version uh, because I shot it on my Fuji X-T2. You can also get it in Micro Four Thirds as well. It's an APS-C or Micro Four Third lens only. It's not a full frame lens. It won't cover the full frame image sensor and you will get a circle if you try to. So this is a crop sensor lens only, APS-C or Micro Four Thirds. I think this is a really important lens because it provides a viable, affordable, wide angle option for APS-C and Micro Four Thirds cameras and that's difficult to do with vintage lenses. 
There are a lot of vintage wides about, but most of them tend to be 28 millimeters or 35 millimeters. Anything wider than 28 millimeters in full frame does start to become very expensive very quickly. And the wider you go, the more that cost increases exponentially. On micro four thirds, it gives a full frame equivalent focal length of 34 millimeters. So I guess it's a, a, a good sort of 35, uh, that area for micro four thirds. On APS-C, it gives a full frame equivalent of about 24 millimeters or thereabouts. And that's a very usefully wide angle lens to shoot with. That is a big gap filled for crop sensor mirrorless shooters who want to shoot manual. So in this respect, this lens really is a winner. One of the first things that strikes me about this lens is how sharp it is. It really is stunningly sharp. And I guess that's to be expected because wides are inherently sharper the wider you go the more inherent sharpness the lens has as a general rule but i have shot plenty of wides that were softer than this one usually with a smaller aperture than this one in fact i think entirely with a smaller aperture than this one i don't think i've ever uh, ever shot a wide lens that's uh, has as wide an aperture as this one at f1.4. So this really is a wide open lens. You can shoot it wide open all day and never see any hint of softness. You just won't see it. It's just not there. None of these images look soft to me. Certainly not as soft as some of my vintage 1.4 50mm lenses. So you really don't need to stop this lens down to get a nice sharp image out of it. Although if you do, it gets absolutely razor sharp and not even the tiniest detail will escape it. I reckon the sweet spot for this lens is around about 5.6 or f8. However, I shot it wide open for most of the time because I couldn't really see a reason to do anything else. It's entirely sharp enough at f1.4 to give me the kind of results that I want. And of course, if you're working in low light, that big f1.4 aperture means you can make the most of what available light there is. Now, this being a pretty wide lens, I wouldn't usually expect it to make too much in the way of background blur. However, the minimum focus distance is only 20 centimeters. That's pretty close. And even though it's very wide, that short minimum focus distance and the wide f1.4 aperture mean that there is quite a bit of blur available if you're shooting close to your subject. And of course, the closer you go, the more blur you'll get too. The blur from this lens is actually really nice. I really like it. It's dynamic. It's alive. It feels like it's moving. It has an energy and it lends that energy to some of the shots it makes. And I think it makes just a hint of swirl too. All in all, it's very pleasing blur. It's alive and energetic. It's soft and dreamy, and it has a beautiful delicacy. It never seems to get rough or harsh. It maintains a softness and a gentleness. And in a lens so wide, that really is something of an unexpected bonus. At 17 millimeters, this is a pretty wide lens, so some distortion is inevitable, at least close up. It's not very obvious unless you start to get close to your subject, and even then it's fairly minimal, and it's much less pronounced than it was in the Pergia 10 millimeter lens I tested a couple of months ago. And of course, a bit of distortion isn't always a bad thing. I do like to play around with the distortions that wide angle lenses 
can make. Distorted shapes and angles can be fun to play around with. And the wider you go, the greater that effect is going to be. It's fairly mild on this one, though, and you're not going to notice it much unless you really are quite close to your subject. Contrast is very strong on this one, and it makes very punchy images indeed. Even though that front element is fairly prominent, and it does actually protrude almost to the outside edge of the lens there. Let me just show you on here. So I don't know if you can see there, the uh, front element does poke out quite a way. It is a fairly prominent optical element but even though it does have that front element sitting right at the front of the lens it resists contrast really well and that speaks very well for the quality of its coatings they really do a very good job in stopping this lens from flaring out like any lens, of course, it will lose contrast if the sun catches it at the wrong angle, but you needn't fear that too much with this one. It's not very easy to provoke. Colours from this lens are absolutely delightful. They really are that nice, and it has a very, very beautiful colour signature. Colours have a fairly delicate sort of feel but at the same time saturation is strong it's not too strong though so colors emerge strong but with a gentle sort of feel they don't reach the heightened saturation of for example a helios 40 or an olympus 55 mil 1.2 so you'll never find these colors to be overwhelming but by the same token they are certainly not underwhelming either as far as colors go i think for most photographers this is going to be something of a goldilocks lens that is just right i think this is a lovely little lens it makes beautiful images it's very well made and it feels really nice in use as well images have that new lens sparkle and it looks great on any mirrorless camera and because it's made for mirrorless cameras you won't need an adapter to use it either all in all this is a great little lens quality is top notch and it fills a yawning gap in manual focus wide angle lenses for crop sensor mirrorless cameras and at less than $150, it's certainly not expensive either. So that's it from me for now. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and ring the bell before you go. And if you like the content on this channel and you'd like to support it and help it grow and develop, you can do that at patreon.com forward slash xenography. As ever, thank you very much for watching. And I will see you next time for some more Xenography.